Okay, let's talk about encryption. So in 2023, there is a lot less emphasis on encryption than in previous years of APCSP. So you might see some previous exam guides which focus a lot more on this. Right now, the amount that you need to know about encryption is pretty high level. It means there's not that much depth, especially with the math that you have to understand. But nonetheless, there's a lot of questions that can be asked. So let's start with this one. So this question focuses on public key encryption and it says, which of these is true about public key encryption? So right away, I'll say the answer to this is A. And not only is the answer to this A, but A is actually a pretty good description of why public key encryption is so important. And there's a couple of keywords here. The first one is that actually public key encryption enables and this is an understatement here in that public key encryption does enable secure communication across the internet in which there might be eavesdroppers. But the fact that it just says enables might be a bit of an understatement because the fact is without public key encryption, the internet really wouldn't be able to exist the way it does. And that's because in order to use the internet, you need to be able to perform secure communication, which means sending messages in a way that others can't read what the contents of your message says. But without asymmetric encryption, such as public key encryption, you would need to share a private key with whoever you are talking to ahead of time, which is just not feasible. You can't just expect to be able to meet ahead of time with whoever you're sending a message to, to share a private key that you will both be using to communicate. Instead, a public key is shared with everyone. Everyone knows your public key. With the use of that public key, you can encrypt your message and only the recipient that's intended to receive it is able to decrypt it using their private key. We'll talk a little bit more about that in another problem. Notably, a lot of these problems about public key encryption will try to trick you into thinking that because the key is public that it's not secure, but it's meant to be public. It's part of how it works. Also, since all data is represented as bits and you can encrypt bits, public key encryption as any other form of encryption works on pretty much anything. And lastly, asymmetric encryption, of which public key encryption is an example of, uses two keys, a public key and a private key, and they're different. They're not the same key. This is why it's called asymmetric encryption. On the other hand, there is a form of encryption called symmetric encryption, of which there's only a single key, and it's the same key to encrypt and decrypt. That's what this answer D is describing. There do exist forms of symmetric encryption that are used uh, quite a bit. The focus on this is an asymmetric encryption, like public key encryption. Notably, symmetric encryption is an example of what we mentioned earlier, where you would need to share that one shared key ahead of time before you can use encrypted communication. By the way, a good example of this would be the Caesar cipher. It's probably one of the first that is taught. We'll go over an example of that later. Here's another question about public key cryptography. This one actually gives us a pretty good excuse to explain how it works. So if you look at this image, this is a really good analogy of how public key encryption works. In this analogy here, you have a mailbox and anyone can drop off a message into it, but only the person who owns the mailbox can actually read that message. That's because only they have the key to open the message. So in terms of public key encryption, the way this would play out is that the slot on the top represents the public key. Anyone can drop in a message that nobody else will be able to read, but only the owner of the mailbox who possesses the private key is able to actually read the messages that were dropped in. So in this case, the public key will encrypt the message so that only the intended recipient can read it, and then the person who actually is intended to receive the message, who owns the private key, are the ones that can open that mailbox and read the contents of that letter. So as such, the question is asking, in public key cryptography, the sender uses the recipient's public key to encrypt a message, so only they will be able to read it. Which of these is needed to decrypt the message? And the answer to this, as we just talked about, is the recipient's private key. The person receiving the message is the only one that has the private key, therefore only they can read what the unencrypted message says by using their own private key. Okay, let's talk a little bit about symmetric encryption. So symmetric encryption is a different form of encryption because there's only one key that is shared between both the sender and the receiver. They both need to know that key. By the way, it doesn't make it an inferior method of encryption. It just makes it a method that doesn't work for the internet. So let's go straight for the answer here. The answer is B. And you can see here that the way that this works is that they have a system that maps each letter of the alphabet to a unique symbol using a secret key. So one very simple example of this is the Caesar cipher, which I'm showing here. In this Caesar cipher, we map each letter to a different letter. For example, we would map D to A, E to B, F to D. So if I have a message like D, E, D, that would be encrypted as A, B, A. So if you send me A, B, A, I know that the actual message is D, E, D, because I know that this specific mapping works by mapping each letter to something that is two letters before it. In this example, the key is actually just that shift. The key is two letters before. 
and you would share that with me and then we would know how to decrypt it. Obviously this is not a good form of encryption. It's a very old one. There's a reason it's called Caesar Cipher. It was used way back in those days. But there are more secure methods of symmetric encryption than this one. Notice by the way the description in part D here. It says Juan writes a message to send to Kelly and slides the message through a slot in front of Kelly's locker. Juan knows that Kelly has not shared her locker combination with anyone, so no one other than Kelly will be able to read the message. This is actually exactly what we described in the previous question regarding asymmetric encryption, public key encryption. So this is not an example of symmetric encryption. In fact, it's a really good example of asymmetric encryption. We also see the same here. A is a very similar idea. C is interesting, but it's actually not really a form of encryption. Anyone that runs into that message will be able to read what it says. So it's not actually a form of encryption. Here's another quick one about symmetric encryption. And this one asks very generally, which of these is true about how symmetric encryption algorithms are typically used? Go well, straight for the answer here. The answer is A. As we described, symmetric key encryptions have a single key. And more importantly, this is a private key. This key needs to be kept secret. We should not share this key with anyone except the specific person we're trying to communicate with. We do that ahead of time. Only the person sending and the person receiving the message know what that shared key is. And also importantly, it's used for both encryption and decryption. We use the same key for encrypting and decrypting the data. So it does not use two keys, which makes both C and D incorrect. And it should definitely not be made public. It should be a private key. Let's go over one last problem about cryptography. And this one is actually about a very specific thing called a certificate authority. Now, you don't need to know a whole lot about what a certificate authority or a CA, as it's sometimes called, is responsible for. But what you do need to know is exactly what it says here in D, which is that a CA is responsible for verifying the authenticity of encryption keys used in secured communications. So in other words, if you get a public key from somebody, you're basically giving them your trust that whatever message you encrypt, they will be able to decrypt and it won't have sensitive information. This ensures that the site that you are communicating with is a trusted site. And if you are a big company, you have to basically arrange with a CA to verify that your secure communication is reliable. In other words, this basically guarantees you in some sort of way that you're communicating with somebody who is trusted. Now, mostly what you need to know about a CA is that it has to do with cryptography and with the authenticity of encryption keys. They will usually try to trick you into thinking that CA grants any other sort of guarantee. It's just about encryption keys. That's all you really have to know about a certificate authority. 